These are the less than 9 6 notes on solving rational equations. Today we're going to be solving equations. So instead of working with just making expressions simplified or factoring expressions or adding or subtracting them, we're going to be solving these rational equations for x. We're going to actually start with the problems at the bottom of this note sheet here where we have sums or differences of rational expressions. This is related to what we've talked about the other day in terms of adding and subtracting. Anytime we work with addition or subtraction, we need to find common denominators. So in our first problem, you may notice that we've got denominators of 4, 2, and 6. Now the 11 can also be written as a fraction. It can be written as 11 over 1. Think of something that 4, 2, 6, and 1 all go into. If possible, think of the smallest number they all go into, in this case 12. So what we're going to do is we're going to rewrite each of these fractions, but I'm going to extend the division bar a little bit longer across each of these here. So we're going to have x over 4 plus x over 2 plus x over 6 equals 11 over 1. But now what we're going to do is we're going to make each of these denominators equal to 12. To do that, we're going to multiply the bottom of the first fraction by 3. And we have to multiply the top by 3 as well, because that means we're just multiplying the original fraction by 3 over 3 or 1. But it does give us a denominator of 12. For our second fraction, we're going to multiply the top and bottom by 6, because 2 times 6 is 12. The top and the bottom of the third fraction will be multiplied by 2, because 6 times 2 is 12. And the top and bottom of the last fraction will be multiplied by 12, because 1 times 12 is 12. All of these denominators are now 12. Our numerator for the first fraction is 3x. It's over 12. Our second fraction is 6x over 12. Our third fraction is 2x over 12. And our final fraction is 132 over 12. In math, if all the denominators are the same, you're actually allowed to cancel them out. So that's what we're going to do here. If each term, even the terms on the right side, if each term has the same denominator, you're allowed to cancel them out. Which leaves us with a very easy algebra expression to solve. 3x plus 6x plus 2x equals 132. We can now add like terms. 3x plus 6x is 9x plus 2x is 11x equals 132. And then you can divide both sides by 11. Our solution 132 over 11 is equal to 12. Now we are going to check our solution to see if it's right. So we're going to do a little check here by plugging in 12 in for each x value. 12 over 4 plus 12 over 2 plus 12 over 6 equals 11. Well, 12 over 4 is 3, 12 over 2 is 6, and 12 over 6 is 2. And 3 plus 6 plus 2 is equal to 11. This checks. In our second problem, we have 1 over x equals 2 over x minus 2 over x plus 2. Just like we did last time, I'm going to rewrite our equation. But I'm going to extend the division bars for each fraction. Now it seems like it would be just easy to add 2 to each of these denominators so we'd have common denominators. But you have to think of x plus 2 as being a factor. So it's never going to be adding something in the denominators. It's always going to be a multiplication process. The first denominator does not have an x plus 2. So we're going to multiply the first fraction by x plus 2 over x plus 2. The second fraction also does not have an x plus 2 in the denominator. So we'll multiply that fraction by x plus 2 over x plus 2. The third fraction does not have an x in the denominator. So we'll multiply the top and bottom by x. And you'll notice that the denominators are all the same. So you could actually cancel them out here. And what we have in the numerator when we distribute is 1 times x plus 2, which is x plus 2, equals 2 times x plus 4 minus 2x. To solve this equation for x, we'll add like terms on each side of the equation. So the left side will stay as x plus 2. The right side has a 2x and a minus 2x. They'll cancel because they're opposites. And it leaves us with 4. Now we can just subtract 2 from each side of the equation. And x is equal to 2. To check our answer, we'll plug in 2 in for each x in this equation. So we have 1 over 2 equals 2 over 2 minus 2 over 2 plus 2. Well, this is 1 half equals 2 over 2 is 1 minus 2 over 2 plus 2 is 2 over 4. Now 2 fourths is 1 half, and 1 half does equal 1 minus 1 half. The statement checks. 
In our third example, we have x plus 4 over x equals 5. Again, I'm going to rewrite x as x over 1 and 5 as 5 over 1. Then we'll rewrite these equations extending the division bar. So we have x over 1 plus 4 over x equals 5 over 1. I notice the second fraction has a denominator of x, so we're going to multiply the top and bottom of the first fraction by x over x. The denominator of the second fraction is x, which is what 1 times x equals. So you could leave this alone. If you want to, you can multiply the top and bottom by 1, but it's not necessary. The third fraction does not have an x in the denominator, so we'll multiply the top and bottom of the third fraction by x over x. Now each denominator is the same. All of these denominators are equal to x, so you can cancel these out. And what you're left with is, in the numerator of the first fraction, x squared plus 4 times 1 is 4 equals 5x. To solve this equation, we move everything to the left side of the equation, so we do need to subtract 5x to the left side. This will give us x squared minus 5x plus 4 equals 0. To solve a quadratic equation, you could use the quadratic formula. However, you'll also notice that you could factor this because there are two numbers you can multiply to get 4 and add to get negative 5, those numbers being negative 1 and negative 4. To solve this equation, you need to figure out what you would have to plug in for x to get 0 here. That would be positive 1. Or what you'd have to plug in for this x to get 0, which would be positive 4. When we check our answer, we're going to plug each of these numbers in for x, starting with 1. So I'm going to do 1 plus 4 over 1 equals 5. 1 plus 4 equals 5, that's true. Then we'll plug in 4 for each x. 4 plus 4 over 4 equals 5. This is 4 plus 1 equals 5. Both solutions check. They're both correct answers. In our last example, we have 1 over x plus 2 plus 1 over x minus 2 equals 4 over x squared minus 4. The denominator of the third fraction can be factored. It's a difference of squares, and it actually factors into two things that we've already seen, x plus 2 and x minus 2. So coming up with common denominators here is not going to be too challenging. Again, we're going to rewrite this problem so that we have extended division bars. Our first fraction does not have an x minus 2, so we'll multiply the top and bottom of the first fraction by x minus 2. The second fraction has an x minus 2, but it doesn't have an x plus 2. So we'll multiply the top and bottom of the second fraction by x plus 2 over x plus 2. The third fraction does have an x plus 2 and x minus 2, so we don't need to change that fraction. If all of the denominators are the same, you can cancel them all out, and then we can distribute. 1 times x minus 2 is just x minus 2. 1 times x plus 2 is just x plus 2, and we have a 4 on the right side. x plus x is 2x. Negative 2 plus 2 cancel equals 4. Divide each side by 2, and you get x equals 2. One last time, we'll check our solutions by plugging 2 in for each x in the original problem. So what we have here is 1 over 2 plus 2 plus 1 over 2 minus 2 equals 4 over 2 squared minus 4. So what we have is 1 fourth plus 1 over 0 equals 4 over 2 squared, which is 4, minus 4 is 0. Uh-oh, we're dividing two of our fractions by 0. You're not allowed to divide by 0. This check makes no sense. So that means that this solution is actually not a solution. What we say is x equals 2 is actually an extraneous solution or extraneous root. You kind of see the prefix extra in here. So it's not truly a solution. We did some algebra here. We got this value, but it doesn't check. And occasionally, that happens with these types of problems. That's why you always want to check and solve when you solve for x to see if your solution is valid. It's not. This problem actually has no solution because our answer we got algebraically does not check. Now let's go back up to the top of our problem set again and look at these two problems. Now I want to show you a shortcut rule, but first let's go through this kind of the old way here. With x over 5 equaling x plus 3 over 8, one thing we could do is find common denominators. Now in this case, the first term is 5, the second term is 8, 40 would be a good common denominator. So to get 40, we need to multiply the top and bottom of the first fraction by 8 over 8. 
and the top and bottom of the second fraction, which is x plus 3 over 8 by 5 over 5. In doing this, you'll notice that we have the same denominator. It's going to be 40, so these will cancel out. And you're left with x times 8 equaling x plus 3 times 5. And if you distribute, you would get 5x plus 15. To solve this equation here, the 15 looks good there. We'll subtract 5x from each side. And this is 8x minus 5x, which equals 3x. And then on the right side, we have 15. Divide both sides by 3, and you get x equals 5. To check our answer, 5 over 5 is equal to 1. And 5 plus 3, which is 8, over 8 is also equal to 1. This checks. Now to get this answer, a shortcut rule that you can get that will get you to the same location is to do what's called cross multiplying, which you can do if you have a single fraction on the left side and a single fraction on the right side. So you could do x times 8, which we actually got on the left side of our problem here, and then you could do 5 parentheses x plus 3, which you get this way. So that's a valid step that you could do with this type of problem. We'll show you both methods with this example as well. 1 over x plus 2 is 1 over x plus 2. You may notice that the right side of this equation can be written as a difference of squares in the denominator, x plus 2, x minus 2. The first fraction does not have an x minus 2, so what you can do is extend the division bar, and multiply the top and bottom by x minus 2 over x minus 2. On the right side, you can leave the 3 alone. Because the denominators are now the same, you can cancel denominators. And on the left side, if you distribute the 1, we get x minus 2 equals 3. Add 2 to both sides, and you get x equals 5. Now we'll check the solution in just a moment, but first I want to show you how you can do cross multiply and get the same solution. If you cross multiply here, you'd end up doing 3 times x plus 2 equals 1 times x squared minus 4. That's just x squared minus 4. When you distribute, you get 3x plus 6 equals x squared minus 4. I'm going to move these things to the other side by subtraction. So that's going to give me x squared minus the 3x. If I subtract the 6 from the negative 4, I get minus 10. This gives me two solutions to check, because you can factor this into x minus 5 and x plus 2. So the solutions I get this way are x equals 5 and x equals negative 2. What's a little peculiar is I get two solutions using the cross multiply method and just one using this method. So let's check out both solutions and see if, they're, if both are valid or maybe just one is. In both problems we got 5 as a solution, so we'll start with 5 first. 1 over 5 plus 2 equals 3 over 5 squared minus 4. So this would be 1 over 7 equals 3 over 5 squared, which is 25, minus 4, which is 21. 1 7 is equal to 3 over 21. x equals 5 does work. Now let's try negative 2 as well. 1 over negative 2 plus 2 equals 3 over negative 2 squared minus 4. On the left side, we get 1 over 0. That's going to be a problem. On the right side, negative 2 squared is 4, minus 4 is 0. Now you might be like, well, 1 over 0 equals 3 over 0. Well, does it? You can't divide by 0, so I really don't know what 1 over 0 and 3 over 0 are equal to. These don't check. If you ever divide by 0, we basically say you can't do this. x equals negative 2 is extraneous, so x equals 5 truly is the right solution. 